The Life and Legacy of the Commander of the Faithfuls, Imam Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salam. The first man in Islam, the cousin of the Prophet, his son-in-law, the first defender and supporter of the Prophet. We will discuss his sacrifice and his contributions over 30 episodes. So please join me. I'm your brother, Mustafa Al-Qazwini. Assalamu alaikum. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين the name of Allah the most merciful the most compassionate may his peace and blessings be upon all the messengers and upon our prophet Muhammad and his pure and immaculate family and his righteous companions and upon you my dear brothers and sisters assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh it was very obvious that uh, the political establishment after the prophet after the departure of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam they insisted on the expulsion of Imam Ali from governance and from ruling and from any type of participation in the government, in the Caliphate. That was very obvious, despite the invitations of the Prophet reminding them in many occasions that my family is important and my successor is this and do not deviate from that if you stick to them to the holy quran and my household you would not be misguided you would not be corrupted you would not be confused or lost or weak but the matter took a different course and we see that very visible after the death of the Prophet when Imam Ali السلام, was completely sidelined and ostracized from this process and we see that at the death of Abu Bakr when he appointed Umar without even consulting the Muslims we see that at the death of Omar himself when he appointed a group of six but he tilted the balance towards Uthman ibn Affan deliberately to deprive Imam Ali from the Khilafah. And we see many things happened after that where people objected to the Saqifah. And let me tell you what some of the companions said. The companions of the Prophet, let's mention some of their names. And we see what they said about the Saqifah. For instance, Khuzayma ibn Thabit, the Shahadatain, a great companion of the Prophet. He came to the community after the death of the Prophet, peace be upon him, when Abu Bakr became the Caliph, and he said, Alastum ta'lamuna anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallama qabila shahadati wahdi wa lam yarid ma'i ghayri. Faqalu bala. Qala fa ashadu anni sami'tu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallama yakul, ahlu bayti yufarriquna bayna al haqqi wal batil, wa humul a'imma alladina yuqtada bihim. وقد علمت ما علمت وما على الرسول وما على الرسول إلا البلاغ المبين. You know that the Prophet accepted my testimony alone, and he considered me to be to be two witnesses because of my integrity and honesty. They said definitely we know, and this is why your name is 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 called ذو الشهادتين 
You are one person, but your testimony is equal to two. He said, then I heard the prophet said, the leaders after me are my family, my household, so you must follow them. Ammar ibn Yasir came, another great companion of the prophet, who said about him, He's full of faith from head to toe. He said to them, Ya ma'ashira Quraysh wa ya ma'ashira al-Muslimin, in kuntum alimtum wa illa fa'lamu anna ahla bayti nabiyikum awla bihi wa ahaqqu bi irthihi wa aqwamu bi umur al-deen wa amanu ala al-mu'minin wa ahfadu li millatihi wa ansahu li ummatihi فَمُرُوا صَاحِبَكُمْ فَلْيَرُدَّ الْحَقَّ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَفْطَرِبَ حَبْلَكُمْ وَيَضْعُفَ أَمْرُكُمْ وَيَظْهَرَ شِقَاقُكُمْ وَتَعْظُمُ الْفِتْنَةُ بِكُمْ He gave a whole speech for warning them that the family of the Prophet, they have the priority to him. They are the closest. They have to lead this nation. We should not divert the affairs from them. And then tell your friend, meaning Abu Bakr, tell him to give them their rights back before it is too late, before we are divided, before we become weak and fragmented. And then after that came <clears throat> Sahl ibn Hunayf. Ashhadu an ala Rasulullah wa qad ra'aytuhu fi hadha al-makan meaning in the mosque of the Prophet, وَقَدْ أَخَذَ بِيَدِ عَلِي يَبْنِ أَبِي طَالِبٍ وَهُوَ يَقُولْ أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ هَذَا عَلِيٌّ إِمَامُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِي وَوَصِيِّ فِي حَيَاتِي وَبَعْدَ وَفَاتِي وَقَاضِي دَيْنِي وَمُنْجِزُ وَعْدِي وَأَوَّلُ مَنْ يُصَافِحُنِي عَلَى حَوْضِي وَطُوبَ لِمَنْ تَبِعَهُ وَنَصَرَهُ وَالْوَيْلُ لِمَنْ تَخَلَّفَ عَنْهُ وَخَذَلَ Again, he said, I saw the Prophet here inside the mosque holding the hand of Ali, saying he's the commander after me. He's the caliph after me. He's the executor of my affairs after me. Lucky is the one, fortunate is the one who's going to follow him and follow his steps. And unfortunate is going to be the one who's going to reject him. This is another testimony from another companion of the Prophet. So they did, they did say. Some people say then, where were the companions of the Prophet? Why did they unanimously agreed to the bay'ah, to the allegiance of Abu Bakr? No, it was not unanimous, not in any way. We must read the history, my friends. We must investigate. It wasn't unanimous. There were many objections by many companions. Many of them were from the Muhajireen. Many of them were from the Ansar. Many were men. Many were women. They came forward. They had the guts and the courage to stand and oppose what happened. Another person, Abu Haytham ibn Tayyihan, he said, I testify that Ali was appointed by the Prophet on the day of Ghadir. And then after this appointment of the day of Ghadir, some people had some hesitation. Many of them, like the Ansar, they said, this appointment is for the Khilafat. وَقَالَ بَعْضُهُمْ مَا أَقَامَهُ إِلَّا لِيَعْلَمَ النَّاسُ أَنَّهُ مَوْلًا مَنْ كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ مَوْلًا some others, they said, no, this is not for Khilafat. The Prophet is not appointing him. But he's saying that he's the friend of whosoever I am his friend. There were discussions and arguments about that. He made it very clear that he is going to be the leader of the nation, the believers, after me, after my departure. And he's the most honest to my community. So he gave his testimony. 
Others like Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, Utbat ibn Abi Lahab, and Nu'man ibn Ajlan, Salman al-Farisi or al-Muhammadi, many others, they stood, they gave their testimonies, and they said that the right has to be back to its own people. One day Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan was telling Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr. Muhammad is the biological son of Abu Bakr ibn Abi Quhafa, but he's the spiritual son, meaning he was raised by Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salatu wassalam. He said, Muawiyah, he confessed many years later, he said, فَقَدْ كُنَّا وَأَبُوكَ نَعْرِفُ فَضْلَ أَبِي طَالِبْ فَضْلَ بْنِ أَبِي طَالِبْ We all knew his virtue with your dad, Abu Bakr. We knew the virtue of Ali ibn Abi Talib. We knew his distinct character. وَحَقَّهُ and his right. لَازِمًا لَنَا مَبْرُورًا عَلَيْنَا فَلَمَّ اخْتَارَ اللَّهِ لِنَبِيِّهِ When God chose for his prophet to leave, to depart. Your dad, Abu Bakr, and Al Faruq Umar were the first one to usurp the right of Ali ibn Abi Talib. They opposed him, they fought against him over the issue of the Khilafah. على ذلك اتفقا واتسقا They coordinated, collaborated upon this issue. ثم إنهما دعواه إلى بيعتهما فأبطأ عنهما Once they made it for Abu Bakr, made the allegiance and the caliphate for Abu Bakr, they said to him now, come and pay allegiance. He didn't go. وتلكأ عليهما they almost killed him because he delayed his bay'ah to Abu Bakr. And we should not forget what Abu, uh, Imam Ali السلام, said to the second caliph. He said to him, احلب يا عمر حلبا لك شطره اشتد له اليوم أمره ليرد عليك غدا. Now, you are doing this scenario, promoting Abu Bakr, asking people to pay allegiance to him, being very enthusiastic about his leadership, because he will return the favor to you tomorrow by making you his successor. And this is exactly what happened in two years. When Abu Bakr died, before his death, he appointed Umar. And he wanted Uthman to write the will. While he said the Prophet did not leave a will, but Abu Bakr, he left a will saying that Umar is my successor. And Lady Fatima to Zahra, the truthful lady, Sayyida to Nisa al Alameen, the master of the ladies of the entire universe, she says, to the entire community of the companions. فَوَسَمْتُمْ غَيْرَ إِبِلِكُمْ وَأَوْرَدْتُمْ غَيْرَ شَرْبِكُمْ You went to the wrong place, the wrong person. ابْتِدَارًا زَعَمْتُمْ خَوْفَ الْفِتْنَةِ Because you were excused and a scapegoat was that you, you want to avoid the commotion. أَلَا فِي الْفِتْنَةِ سَقَطُوا وَإِنَّ جَهَنَّمَ لَمُحِيطَةٌ بِالْكَافِرِينَ But that act was itself a fitna, commotion and disorder and disobedience of God and His Apostle. So what was the repercussions? The repercussions was definitely the weakening of the Ummah and the division of the Ummah. And bypassing the Prophet, number one, bypassing God, and what the Prophet said, when he, in numerous occasions, he said, I don't want division in my community after me. I want to make this, this 
uh, subject very clear, this sensitive subject, by appointing Ali. But they diverted from that. And belittling the opinion of the Ummah. And forcing them to follow a specific person. That was belittlement and depreciation for the opinion, for the public opinion of the Ummah. And also, violence was used, unfortunately, in this matter. Not only violence, but also they used wealth to encourage some people to vote for the first caliph. And this is how mutiny started and disobedience and insurgency started in Islam. However, Imam Ali alayhi salam, he did not have a greed vis-a-vis -vis power. He was not sitting, wait, sitting there waiting to jump and grab power. This was not in his mind. What was in his mind is service. فَوَالَّذِي فَلَقَ الْحَبَّةَ وَبَرَأَ النَّسَمَةَ لو لا حضور الحاضر وغياب الحجة بوجود الناصر وما أخذ الله على العلماء على أن لا يقار على كضة ظالم ولا سغب مظلوم لألقيت حبلها على غاربها ولا سقيت آخرها بكأس أولها ولا رأيتم دنياكم هذه أزهد عندي من عفطة عنز If it wasn't for the sense of responsibility that I have to stand with the truth, defend truth and justice, promote social justice, fight tyranny and aggression and corruption. I would have left this issue and left this matter, but I have a responsibility. He was not obsessed with, with the seat. He was not obsessed with the caliphate to be a ruler. He just wanted to be a servant. To serve and the matter was settled while the Prophet is not buried and he was busy in preparing the burial of the Prophet washing him shrouding him the process of burial death and the Good family of Bani Hashim were helping Imam Ali. They were standing aside. They did not go into the middle of this commotion and this fitna and this conspiracy. They kept themselves aloof because they are the family of the prophethood, Nubuwa. They were raised by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Here, meanwhile, someone who's opportunist and he has a political mind he was cunning he was reluctant to accept Islam until he was forced he was spearheading the fights against the Muslim for so many years he was persecuting them burning their homes in Mecca confiscating their belongings driving them out of Mecca torturing them many Muslims were tortured and under him and his supervision and his direct involvement, his name was Abu Sufyan. Sakhr ibn Harb. This man accepted Islam in the eighth year, just two years before the death of the Prophet. So this man, when he saw the caliphate is taken to Abu Bakr, not him or a family of his clan, which is the clan of Bani Umayyah. And this man from day one, he looked at Islam as being an empire and the Nubuwa as being just political leadership, political post, Za'ama, Sultan. So the Prophet is a Sultan, nothing but Sultan. And a leader. 
This is how he perceived the Nubuwa. It was hard for him to accept Islam. However, he accepted it because, you know, he had no choice. He was left with no choice. This person came to Imam Ali and Al-Abbas. Al-Abbas being the uncle of the Prophet, and Imam Ali is the brother and the son-in-law of the Prophet. He came to them and he said, Wow, I'm so outraged. I'm so angry that Abu Bakr is assuming the Caliphate. This is unfair. This is gross. We have to fight this. We have to resist this. I can't allow this to happen. It's taken from your household. So let's mobilize our troops and our forces and our tribes and fight against Abu Bakr. Fight against this establishment. But he was not genuine. And Imam Ali is not a naive person. Imam Ali knows the intentions of this man. He wants to create further commotion. He wants to create a civil war in Medina among the Muslims. Yes, Imam Ali, Khilafah was taken away from him, but he wanted to keep, to keep Islam safe. He did not want to Islam to be taken away. So he said to Abu Sufyan, he said to him, I know your intention, Abu Sufyan. I know you very well. You are not a genuine person. You just want to create further commotion and disunity and anarchy in Medina. This is your goal. For a long period of time, you harbored evil to Islam to destroy this religion. Thank you. We don't need your, your advice. But then, of course, he calmed down Abu Sufyan when he realized that Abu Bakr bribed him by appointing one of his children as a governor. So when they told him, listen, listen, you are not completely empty handed. You have some share in this government. Your son is going to be a governor. He said, then Abu Bakr did a great job. May God, you know, protect him and please him. So his intention, in fact, was not to help Imam Ali. His intention was to create commotion. But Imam Ali was too smart to be deceived by Abu Sufyan and others. Though he did not become Khalifa, but Islam for him was important. Protecting Islam and keeping the coherence, the national coherence, the national unity of the Ummah was one of his goals, and we will see how he was working to consolidate the Ummah and bringing, to, bringing them together, despite his resentment against the Caliphs, but he worked with them, and he was a senior advisor to them, and they were always thanking him and appreciating him for being an honest man, because Islam was at stake. And if Imam, if Imam Ali does not do that, Islam would have lost its, its strength and power and existence too. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.